again, everybody, and thank you for returning for my third video about Palm Springs, California, featuring the many attractions in the downtown area. It's the place where you can find a giant Marilyn Monroe statue, a big statue of Bumblebee, a small statue of I Love Lucy, another big statue honoring the Native Americans, and plenty of stars on the Walk of Fame. There's a good combination of shopping opportunities between small businesses and big franchise companies. There's one store that's full of small and comic animal statues, another one with thousands of different crystals, and even a store full of interesting and unique socks. I found another store full of many creative goods with the majority of them imported from Turkey, then a candy store with unusual soda flavors you've probably never heard of, and of course I stopped by some more art galleries. Downtown is also the place if you want to learn about the earliest days of Palm Springs and see some of the oldest buildings in town. It's also the area with some of the newest attractions in town, including a brand new spa and some good nightlife spots that I'm looking forward to telling you all more about. So the main street in downtown that continues from the Uptown District is called Palm Canyon Drive. It holds special events such as the annual Christmas Parade and the Evening Street Fair every Thursday night where you can find a variety of foods and other arts and crafts owned by small businesses. There's also many hotels located either on Palm Canyon Drive or within a short walking distance. That leaves my next topic being about my first hotel suggestion, and located in the heart of it all is the Kimpton Rowan. The rooftop has a nice and spacious pool area with plenty of sun lounging chairs and a bar area. It also offers amazing panoramic views and a great place to be during sunset. The room I stayed in had a great mountain view that was also very clean and spacious. There's complimentary beer and wine during their social hour in the lobby, which also features a nice cafe that's open all day and includes a nice outdoor patio. I also loved working out in their gym on the second floor because I love the views of the outside area. Now my next big hotel I want to suggest is the Renaissance Hotel located just two blocks off Palm Canyon Drive. The lobby will definitely give you the resort-like impression with how big it is that includes plenty of seating with a nice bar area. Outside is both a good-sized jacuzzi and pool area, which was one of the biggest out of any I've experienced in all of Palm Springs, as well as the hotel itself. There are plenty of places to suntan with multiple cabanas and even a few fire pits to enjoy when the sun goes down. The room I got was on the very top floor that opened up to a balcony with a great view of everything and was also very pretty to enjoy at night. I do have more hotel suggestions, but for now I'm going to switch it up and talk about some coffee shops. There's a music themed coffee house called Grey that's full of record players and has live music on selected nights. One drink they are popular for are their upside down vanilla cappuccinos. Location-wise, it's at the end of the Henry Frank Arcade where you can also explore some more unique shops and small businesses. Then down the street, there's a French cafe called Mon Amour that's near the start of downtown and has a nice outdoor patio. Inside, I was really impressed with the room that was full of different pictures of France. I really enjoyed having my breakfast in there and I totally suggest ordering their egg and bacon croissant. They also have a nice bakery selection with many different French pastries to choose from. A few blocks away from Palm Canyon Drive is another coffee location that has another outdoor area with plenty of seating and a different backdrop of the mountains. It's a very popular spot for both locals and visitors, and I never get tired of their blackberry peach yogurt parfait. 
Now moving on to two smaller hotels, with the first being the Best Western Las Brisas and the second being the Courtyard by Marriott. Starting with the Best Western, the property is very beautiful because much of it is covered with vines and flowers. Location-wise, it's just one block away from Palm Canyon Drive and just a short walk away to many of downtown's restaurants. The rooms were very clean and had lots of room as well as their pool area which also had a jacuzzi. Located a mile east is the Courtyard by Marriott. The rooms here were also very clean and I had a small patio that went right to the pool and jacuzzi. It may not be as near to Palm Canyon Drive comparing to my other suggestions, but I still suggest this hotel for its cleanliness, friendly staff, average size pool area, good size lobby, and overall I felt like I got my money's worth for the price I paid. Now moving on to the restaurants, I want to start off with two very new ones. The first is the Rooftop 262 Bar & Grill. It's one of the few places in town where you can dine on a second story outdoor patio and get a view. Their barbecue wings are the most popular and it's also something I recommend along with their Fat Jesse Burger that has jalapenos and other spices grilled into the beef patty. Directly below is the Mexican restaurant called Sol Agave that's also open for breakfast. Two breakfast items I suggest are both the breakfast burrito and their huevos rancheros that's made with two fried tortillas. They both were very good but were quite spicy, just in case you love or don't do well with spicy food. Directly across the street from both restaurants is LG Steakhouse. Inside has plenty of nice seating areas and outside also has a nice selection. I really enjoyed having their prime rib with some red wine and asparagus. I came back another night and tried their salmon which was also very good as well as their sky high tower of onion rings that I ordered for an appetizer. If you want to feel like you're on an airplane, the PS Air Bar is in the back of a wine store. Every Saturday night at 5 o'clock they have a dinner show called the In Flight Experience that features both live music and dancing. The employees actually dress like flight attendants and you even get a boarding pass before you enter to make you feel like you're actually boarding a plane. Right away they serve you both a cheese and fruit board with a drink and then after about an hour your main entree is actually served on airplane trays. You can still come in during normal hours for a similar airplane experience to have lunch or dinner and one item they are known for is their gourmet pizza made on flatbread. I also liked the pictures they had on their airplane windows, including the one they had as Superman. On a final note, there's also a nice deli shop in the wine store that serves great sandwiches. In the heart of downtown are two popular plazas located across the street from each other and they also had some of my favorite places to eat at. The first is the Mercado Plaza that's recognizable for the fountain in the very front. Located on the second story is a popular restaurant called Wilma and Freda where you can not only have great views but the opportunity to have your own balcony. I came for breakfast one morning and ordered the churro waffle topped with berries and then another morning to have the biscuits and gravy topped with scrambled eggs with a side of breakfast potatoes. I had the best views in the house and also sat in the same spot with their fire pit lit up when I came back for dinner another night. All the waiters recommended the roasted chicken and crispy mustard bacon sandwich and that is my recommendation also. Across the street is the other plaza called the La Plaza, which was built in the year 1936 and also has a good combination of shopping. One place located here is the Farm Restaurant, which I found very impressive because it gave me the feeling as if I were dining in the French countryside. For breakfast, the chicken and waffles with bacon was incredible. Their French toast with berries are very popular. And then for lunch, I recommend ordering their chicken sandwich. There is another French restaurant on the other side of the La Plaza called the French Miso Cafe that also has beautiful outdoor dining and is very nicely decorated. If you decide to come for breakfast, 
I recommend their Eggs Benedict made with prosciutto. A popular historic restaurant that I want to recommend next is the Las Casuelas restaurant, which is located about a block away. There's plenty of different areas to eat inside and outside has both a nice bar area and many seating areas where you can enjoy some live music. This restaurant has been owned by the same family for more than six decades, and the original restaurant from the year 1958 is still in business and located near the start of downtown. The family then opened the bigger location in 1979 at a building from the 1920s. I definitely recommend having the carne asada burrito, and it's another place to get some great tacos. A short walk off Palm Canyon Drive is Sherman's Deli that have been awarded numerous times. Many other sandwiches are stacked high and the one I really enjoyed was their hot pastrami. They also have a great bakery selection and I was able to get a huge slice of the German chocolate cake. Down the street is the very casual American restaurant called Johnny Bongo's that also gives you more views of Palm Canyon Drive from a second story outdoor patio. It's another place that's open from breakfast to dinner, and what I recommend having for lunch are their burgers. On a quick side note, and directly below, are one of the tap rooms of the La Quinta Brewing Company. It's a pretty laid back and casual place to be, as well as a place to enjoy a flight of beers. Now for the desserts. One of my favorites was definitely Brandini Toffee. They have chocolate covered ice cream bars that are topped with toffee crumbs as well as their ice cream scoops that come with a piece of almond roca. There's also a candy store called Lolly and Pops, which has flavored sodas such as Martian poop, pickle, peanut butter and jelly, bacon, and so many others. If that doesn't interest you, it's still a great place for many gelato flavors as well as having a nice collection of different chocolates. Across the street is Lappert's Ice Cream, which is very popular and very Hawaiian themed. They've been awarded for best ice cream three years in a row by the Desert Sun and have also been featured in the local Palm Springs Life magazine as having the Coachella Valley's best date shake. A short walk away is Great Shakes, which was ranked in the best 18 ice cream shops in America by Yahoo Food. There was lots to choose from on their giant menu, but what I ordered was their chocolate peanut butter. About a mile away from downtown is Monster Shakes, where I was overwhelmed by the many different and crazy kinds. What I ended up getting was the Cookie Monster that was topped with a chocolate chip cookie ice cream sandwich. I also recommend ordering the chocolate peanut butter crunch that are topped with Reese's peanut butter cups and chocolate covered waffles. Downtown is definitely the best part of the city for nightlife lovers. And the first place I wanna talk about is a brand new nightclub called Reforma. This place has two different and good sized bar areas with half the property being a restaurant and the other half opening as a nightclub around 10 o'clock. The dance floor has plenty of room and has a DJ performing on selected nights. Another good and lively option up the street that also serves as a restaurant is the Antigua nightclub. It's only a few years old and one of the top picks in Palm Springs for nightclubs. Both clubs do have very small cover charges, but I found them both well worthwhile. Further up the road is the Tonga Tiki Bar that features some creative drinks on the menu and has an outdoor patio on a two-story building, which is on top of a few grab-and-go food places. A few blocks away and located at the Mercado Plaza is a store called the Fame Cigar and Wine, which is one of my favorite places to relax outside. The shelves are full of wine bottles, there's a room full of many cigars, and it's another place to get a cold beer. Speaking of beer, I would also like to recommend the Las Palmas Brewery, which is family owned and the only brewery in the city of Palm Springs. They have a good sized outdoor patio in their backyard and has food companies on selected nights. There's also plenty of good places to sit inside and overall another place with a casual atmosphere. Now, if you like public art, there's a great collection of attractions located behind Palm Canyon Drive and near the Kimpton Resort. The Forever Maryland statue attracts many visitors, but don't forget to come back at night when it's lit up. Looking down on the lot next to it is an area that features an exhibit called the Palm Springs Babies, where you can read about both the story and the artist on a small information board. Be sure to go all the way in the back where you'll notice the art museum and the vertical car that's on top of a small pool. 
Going back in front of the Kempton Resort, you'll find a bit more public art with the Isabel statue and then the Palm Springs Love Sign, which is near plenty of public seating areas and one of the main intersections. Then about a mile away and located just off Palm Canyon Drive is the very popular art installation of five different colored popsicles, so be sure to check these out also. One museum full of art that's right on Palm Canyon Drive is the Modernism Museum. It's an attraction you'll want to spend around 30 to 45 minutes depending how interested you are in architecture or art. And if you're normally not, there are many different rooms with their own style and creativity that you'll find impressive. My favorite was the room with the yellow fireplace with the hand for a chair, and there's also a pretty cool gift shop at the very front. So moving on with the history, I'm going to first start off with the two oldest buildings in all of Palm Springs. The first is the McCallum Adobe, built in 1884 and named after John McCallum and his family who were known as the first non-Indian settlers in the area. Inside is the Museum for the Palm Springs Historical Society. Unfortunately, no photos or videos are allowed inside, but there were many history photos and exhibits that I advise you all to check out. Located next to it is the second oldest building, which is the Cornelia White House from 1893. Both buildings are located in a small park known as the Village Green Center, which also features another large fountain in the front center. The area also had natural hot springs that were used by the Native Americans and are now the location of the brand new Sehi Spa. With the combination of the palm trees and the hot springs, they then inspired the naming of the city to be called Palm Springs. As for the spa, there's a good sized pool that features a waterfall and there's multiple private cabanas and day beds you can rent. There is also an outdoor cafe next to the pools as well as an indoor one near the lobby. There's quite a few whirlpools you can relax in, multiple mineral baths you can use privately, and even a mineral pool near the main pool area. They have many treatment rooms such as massage rooms, saunas, steam rooms, and grounding rooms that I wasn't able to get footage of. I was, however, able to walk in the huge fitness center they had and check out both the chirotherapy machine and the floating baths that are full of Epsom salt. Next to the spa is the soon-to-be Agua Caliente Cultural Plaza that is currently under construction and is supposed to include many history exhibits and another place to learn about the early days of Palm Springs. Another attraction with lots of history behind it is the downtown park located near the Marilyn Monroe statue. This area was once the site of the Desert Inn, which was built in 1909 by Nellie Kaufman and her husband. It was originally used as a sanitarium to treat patients with tuberculosis, and after a vaccine was found, Nellie decided to transform the sanitarium into a resort hotel. It soon attracted many visitors from all over the world and was a great place for social gathering. The hotel eventually was demolished in 1967 and a small plaque honors its history today. As for the park, it's full of palm trees and is a very well lit up place to be at night. It also features a good sized waterfall and a nice green space for public seating in the back. My next historical attraction I want to talk about are the remains of the Oasis Hotel located on Palm Canyon Drive. It was built in 1923 and the best visible feature is the tower located behind a jewelry store. The hotel originally stretched for a few blocks south to where the foot shop now stands today in the Village Green Center. This is where the hotel's dining hall stood and there's a plaque on the outside that explains it. As for more information about the hotel, you can find a few historical boards down the alley where the tower is. On a quick side note, the fudge shop is another place I enjoyed and recommend for different kinds of fudge and chocolate covered treats, as well as a small ice cream section. Across the street from the Oasis Tower is the Plaza Theater that was built in 1936 and attracted many Hollywood celebrities. The theater is non-operational today, but the city has made it a goal for its restoration. Then just steps away at the end of the block is the Wellwood Murray Library, which is the location of the area's first hotel in 1886 and named after the man who built it. 
1938, Wellwood had a son named George that donated the property to the city on the condition to be used as a free library. It then served as the main library from 1941 until 1975 and is now today a hybrid between the branch of the Palm Springs Public Library and a visitor's center. This does conclude my downtown video, and my next and final video for Palm Springs will feature both the historic hotels in the Tennis Club neighborhood just behind downtown and the many hiking trails and popular restaurants in South Palm Springs. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for just one more video.